Whilst we were all asleep one night, an animal, supposed to be a dog, passed through camp, bit several persons as they lay, and then disappeared. On the following morning, considerable anxiety was manifested by those who were bitten, under the apprehension that the animal might have been afflicted with the hydrophobia, and several of them took their guns and went about camp shooting all suspicious looking dogs, but were unable to determine that any one was positively mad. During the day, information came from the Rocky Mountain Fur Company, who were encamped a short distance below us on the same side of the river, that several men were likewise bitten in their camp during the night, and that a wolf, supposed to be rabid, had been killed in the morning. The excitement which this affair originated, however, gradually subsided, and nothing more was heard of mad dogs or wolves. In the fall subsequent, one of the persons who had been bitten, a young Indian brought from the Council Bluffs by Mr. Fontenelle, after having given indications of the hydrophobia, disappeared one night from camp and was heard of no more, the general impression being that he wandered off while under its influence and perished. Another individual died of that horrible malady after having several violent spasms while on his way from the mountains to St. Louis in company with two others. Whether there have been any more instances of this kind, I am not informed. Warren Ferris, Life in the Rocky Mountains, 1833. A day or so later, we learned that a mad wolf had gotten into Mr. Fontenelle's camp about five miles from us, and had bitten some of his men and horses. My messmates, who were old hands, had heard of the like before, when men had gone mad. It was very warm, toward the latter end of July, we were in the habit of sleeping in the open air, and never took the trouble to put up the tent except in bad weather. But when evening came, the boys set up the tent. Some of the other messes asked, what is that for? The reply was, oh, mad wolf come, he bite me. When the time came to retire, the pack saddles were brought up to barricade the entrance of our tent, the only one in camp excepting that of the boss. After all hands had retired, nothing was heard in the camp except now and then the cry of, all's well, and some loud snoring, until the sudden cry of, oh, I'm bitten, then immediately another, and another. Three of our men were bitten that night, all of them in the face. One poor fellow, by the name of George Holmes, was bitten badly on the right ear and face. All hands got up with their guns in pursuit of the animal, but he made his escape. When daylight came, men were mounted to go in search, but nothing could be seen of him. It was then thought he had gone and was not likely to return, and no further precaution was taken than the night before. But it seems that Mr. Wolf, who was thought far away, had hidden near camp, for about midnight the cry of, Mad Wolf, was heard again. This time the animal was among the cattle and bit our largest bull, which went mad afterward on the bighorn, where we made the boats. The wolf could have been shot, but orders were not to shoot in camp for fill of accidentally killing someone, and so Mr. Wolf again escaped, but we learned afterwards he had been killed by some of Mr. Fontenelle's men. Charles Larpenter, 1833